Monster Creepypasta. When I was a kid, my grandpa told me a story that I would never forget, and it is one that made me obsessed with the paranormal and UFOs. This is the story he told to me word for word. It was the year 1959 when I was just a young man, and it was then that I used to work for a secret part of the government that had me hunting down unknown creatures all over the country, and it was an experience I will never forget mainly because of one beast in particular that stalked and terrorized a small town in the middle of nowhere, and that thing was intense, and unlike anything I've ever came across. This is what happened the night my partner Agent Tover and I came face to face with the Sightmare Monster, also known as the Sighter. I won't give you the exact state or place, but I will say that the town wasn't very big, and everybody seemed to know each other, which would be normal. But upon arriving there, we would be confused and a bit weirded out because everywhere we looked, every person from children to adults were wearing sunglasses, and they were the kind that covered their eyes all the way around. And if that wasn't odd enough, it was nighttime, during the winter, and the ground was covered with snow. We stood there by our car just looking around and speaking amongst ourselves, trying to figure out exactly what we were seeing, when the person we were waiting for pulled up beside us, that being the sheriff who also wore sunglasses. We could tell that he wasn't getting much sleep by the way he acted, and he looked defeated, like he just wanted to quit his job and give up, but somehow manages to stay strong for his community. He would sit there for a few seconds just giving us a glance over before he would ask us if we were from the government, in which I replied that we were. He would just take a breath in as he turned his head towards the road while telling Agent Tover and me to follow him. So we hopped in our car and stayed close to the sheriff until we found ourselves driving down a path that led back to a cabin in the woods. And it was there that we would see the horrific scene surrounding a family. As Agent Tover and myself followed the sheriff into the residence, we would walk into the cabin only to be met by the bodies of a man, a woman, and two small children, and they were all missing their eyes. The sheriff, after taking off his hat and kneeling down next to the family, would say to us that the killings happened the previous night, but they were not the first to be found that way. Two other families were also discovered mauled to death in their homes and missing their eyes, and as he stood back up and looked in our direction, he would tell us something disturbing. He said that it came from a spacecraft that beamed it here before it took off in the sky, and those who see it, it sees, and the only way to protect ourselves from it is to hide our eyes, because the eyes are the windows to the soul, and that creature seems to hunt for that very thing. And the reason the town knew how to hide themselves from it was due to the dreams of an eight-year-old girl who also lived in the town, who claims that aliens came to her while asleep and told her to hide her eyes, which is what she did one night the creature came into her room and never harmed her because it could not see her. And she called it the Cider. The sheriff would go on to describe the beast since he got to see it close up one night he was driving home, where it forced him to stop since it was standing in the middle of the road eating a deer, and how he said it looked was quite concerning. The sheriff described it as looking almost human but one with no clothing on, and that it was also bald and had horns. But the most eerie appearance about the creature is that it had no eyes, which made me think of the question anyone would think of, and that was, how was it able to see then? The sheriff even said that he shot the thing multiple times in the back, but it just continued eating the deer it had grasped in both of its hands, and it acted like the bullets were not phasing it, and if he wasn't wearing sunglasses, he believes he would have been as dead as the deer. My partner and I just looked at one another, both giving each other concerned facial expressions due to what we heard, basically because every monster we've ever hunted went down from the bullets tearing through their bodies, and not one ever took rounds into it and hadn't reacted. After the three of us examined the bodies of the family, we would notice that they wasn't eaten by the creature, and was just killed by it, due to deep gashes that its claws left. After the coroner came and the bodies were taken away, the sheriff, Agent Tover, and myself would follow tracks the monster had left, which were leading all further into the woods, and once we got to a specific spot, the three of us would come across one of the most horrific sights imaginable, and that was when our flashlights lit up the bodies of at least 13 people stacked on top of one another, and they all seemed to have been teenagers, and they too had their eyes removed. 
I remember Agent Tover throwing up over the disgusted smell of the rotten human bodies that laid at least 10 feet away from us, and I as well felt like vomiting, but I kept myself from doing so by covering my nose with my hand. And as the three of us stood there, taking in such a terrible scene, we would all witness something out of this world. And that happened the second lights appeared in the sky right above us, and they were all moving in a circular motion, as it stayed in one place for about five minutes before shooting upwards and out of sight. And that scary supernatural encounter had me shook up, but also thinking about the little girl, and what she said about being visited by aliens in her dreams. And after we got the bodies removed from the woods, we made our way to interview the girl, whose name was Mary. The sheriff parted ways with us after taking us to Mary's, whose father would greet us at the door because Mary already knew we were coming and told him. Tim Weinhorn, he said his name was, as he shook our hands and invited us inside to meet his daughter, who was sitting on the couch next to her black lab, who barked at our appearance, and her older brother called Brett, who looked only a few years older than her. And once she seen us, her eyes would go wide as she got up and walked over to us as she said the most strangest and downright scary thing to Agent Tover and me, and that was when she said that one of you will die. The cider will take your eyes. Please, don't go into the house. We both sat there for a moment looking at one another and then back at Mary before I asked her how she knew we would die, and what she said set chills up my spine. As she looked up at us, with her green eyes wide, she would utter the words, because I dreamed it, and my dreams always come true. We must have sat at the Winehorn residence up until 12 o'clock in the morning, writing down everything Mary told us about the Sightmare Monster, and that little girl knew a lot. She said that the cider was brought to Earth by the gray aliens who released it here so they could see how humans fare up against it. I guess it was either something that they created or found and wanted to use mankind as their guinea pigs to conduct an experiment. And just thinking about that made me feel very uncomfortable, knowing that our race could easily be wiped out when creatures out of this world invade it, like the cider. After leaving, we made our way to the police station where the sheriff gave both of us a pair of sunglasses. We didn't hesitate to put them on, and thankfully we did, because it was then that a report of the cider came in describing the creature attacking a farmer's cows at a nearby farm. So the sheriff, myself, and Agent Tover made our way over there, where we would be greeted by the farmer named Mr. Williamson, who stood at the end of his driveway wearing sunglasses and holding a shotgun. He was your typical older man, one that was grumpy and loud when he talked, but his trembling let the three of us know that he was a bit shook up from his encounter with the Sightmare Monster. Mr. Williamson wouldn't go near it, but he would point over in the direction of his cow pen and refuse to go with us. And as the sheriff, Tover, and I all walked towards the pen, we would hear a very heavy growling coming from the location as cows were mooing in distress. And once we made it to where the cows were, me and Agent Tover would see for the first time the cider, just casually eating one of the cows it killed as it continued to growl. I whispered to Tover to run back to the car and grab the tranquilizer gun that we always brought along to try and capture the beast we were after. Regular guns were only used if we needed to. And as he ran to get the gun, I had the sheriff take Mr. Williamson inside his home as I waited for Agent Tover to return. After he made it back, I took the dark gun, inserted in the tranquilizer, and shot it in the back of the neck of the creature. But the thing didn't even react. It just kept eating the dead cow. But after like 15 minutes of waiting, the cider would eventually fall over, giving me, Tover, and the sheriff the opportunity to tie it up and load it in the back of Mr. Williams's truck he let us borrow. We took the thing to the local jail, where we were able to lock it up in a cell while me and Tover waited for the army to arrive to help us escort it to a government facility. But things wouldn't go as planned and waiting for the army to arrive after we called them wasn't going to work out because soon after putting the cider in a cell, it woke up only to burst through the bars as it began attacking security officers and inmates that wasn't wearing sunglasses to hide their eyes from it. Those of us that were wearing glasses fired upon the beast, but it wasn't affecting it in the slightest. It just continued its rampage all throughout the jail 
until it caused a fire to start in the kitchen which made the monster run in fear like a regular animal would. And that is what gave me the idea on how to kill it. But my plan was declined once my superior, Agent Braxton, arrived, who would stomp out my idea when he informed both me and Tover that we are to return the beast alive. And in his words, it was because Uncle Sam was depending on it. I was frustrated at that moment, mainly because I had the Sightmare Monster caught, but the tranquilizer didn't keep it asleep long enough for us to have it transported to a more secure location, and now it had escaped to possibly kill more people, and my idea to once again tranquilize it, then burn it up was declined by my superior, and that was the first time the thought of retirement crossed my mind, because the government never really wanted us to kill the monsters we found to keep the public safe, and they would scold us whenever we did eliminate them. And not only was I angry about all of that, but Braxton wouldn't listen to us when we said for him and all of the soldiers he brought with him needed to put on sunglasses. He straight up refused to do so and wasn't going to tell the soldiers to wear any, which put them all at risk of being mauled to death by the cider. But being I was pretty much just a lackey for the government, there was nothing I could do but just tag along and hope that none of them see the cider because I knew the outcome of that. Tover and I, armed with the tranquilizer gun and our pistols, followed Agent Braxton and all of the soldiers out of the jail due to them tracking that thing by following its blood trail that led back into the forest, which is where my fears would come true. As soon as we made it into the woods, we would begin to hear gunfire followed by screams of soldiers echoing around us while they were being slaughtered. So I began to shout for everyone to cover their eyes as I explained that the cider couldn't find them if they did. And to my surprise, even Agent Braxton did as I requested while the soldiers next to us put their hands over their eyes. Me and Agent Tover, still wearing our sunglasses, would run further into the woods and towards the commotion we were hearing. And once we made it to our destination, we had seen a dozen soldiers laying dead on the ground and all were missing their eyes while the cider sat in the middle of them, eating each eyeball he took. Tover then aimed the tranquilizer gun, shooting two darts in the back of the beast, but that time it didn't just sit there until it passed out. The damn thing pushed wings out of its back and flew off in the night sky, leaving us both dumbfounded after what we saw. From there on, Agent Braxton along with every soldier received and put on sunglasses they got from the sheriff, who kept boxes of them at his police station, and it is there that we would wait for a phone call reporting the monster's whereabouts, which didn't take long, but this time the person reporting the sighting was Mr. Winehorn, who says that the cider crashed through his window and was laying asleep in his living room floor, and that there were also UFOs flying all over his property. So we didn't waste any time following the sheriff back to the residence along with our superior and the company of soldiers. But little did Agent Braxton know, but me and Tover made some Molotov cocktails and were planning to use them to try and kill the very thing that was taking people's lives all over the town. And neither one of us cared if we got in trouble or not, because we were both thinking of quitting anyways. Once we arrived, Mr. Weinhorn, Mary, and Brett would meet us outside of their home where the family were visibly shaken up due to the sightmare monster laying unconscious in their house. But we didn't see UFOs anywhere, so we just made our way inside where we could see the window had been destroyed by the fallen body of the cider that crashed through it. But the monster itself was missing from the living room, and the loud noises we heard coming from upstairs helped us locate where it was. So one by one, we all made our way upstairs and into what I believe was Mary's room, where we seen it standing next to and facing the window. And right as Tover was about to trank it once again, it would push the wings out of its back, hitting the light lamp next to the bed, causing it to fly back and hit Tover, knocking his sunglasses off. And once Tover looked up at the cider, it would turn around quickly facing him, then letting out a loud roar as it lunged at Tover, who would run out of the room, then the house, and he would just make it to our car and pull out a Molotov cocktail right before the cider wretch him, where it would pull out his eyes with its sharp claws and devour them right in front of the rest of us. Mary was right. One of us did die, and it was my friend and partner, someone I thought would live a long life, and it happened so sudden. 
and all it took was one glance at the cider without hiding his eyes, which was enough for it to spot him. And after it did, he had no chance. Me, Agent Braxton, and all the soldiers began to fire at that thing, but it just stood there next to my car with its back turned to us and didn't budge even though our bullets were ripping through its body rapidly. And it wasn't until someone shot the Molotov cocktail that lay next to the cider on the ground before the beast would take damage once the fire touched it. But like once before, the cider would fly away, having us chase it. Due to heavy snow falling, it was impossible to see where it was headed or to keep up with it. So all of us just went back to base camp at the police department, also bringing with us the Winehorn family, where we would sit and wait for the blizzard to end. And as I sat down drinking a cup of coffee, the only thing I could think about was my friend and how we could have avoided his death if we were allowed to kill the Sightmare Monster. And that was the moment I was finished hunting monsters, but not until I found the one that murdered a lot of people from that town and Agent Tover. I was determined to see it through to the end, and since my car was then undrivable after being shot up by our bullets, I then paired up with Agent Braxton, who was also then willing to kill the beast. So after both of us and the soldiers made more Molotov cocktails, we were set to find and kill it. But something unexpected yet shocking would take place as we were about to begin our search, since the snow eased up. And that is when Mary walked over to us and said, that the Sightmare Monster wasn't just brought to Earth to see how humans fare up against it. Its purpose was also to find, and in Mary's words, a star child that was descended from another planet by a different race than the Grey Aliens, and that is the race that had been telepathically communicating with Mary and warning her of things to come. Everything began to make sense to me, and I then realized it was Mary the Beast was seeking, since it had visited her home multiple times. Mary is who the aliens were after, and they sent a monster to retrieve her, which gave me the idea to just keep Mary and her family with us at the police station on the hunch that the cider would come for her. We all sat there looking goofy while wearing sunglasses in complete silence for around an hour before we would then see it drop from the sky, landed in the parking lot outside, before making its way towards the department. But little did it know that we had multiple soldiers hiding all around the building, where they would run up and chain the monster's legs to military trucks right before lighting up and throwing Molotov cocktails at it, setting it on fire. The beast spread its wings and flew up towards the sky, lifting both trucks up with it, but thankfully their weight was enough to bring it back down to the ground, where more Molotov cocktails were again thrown at it, causing it to roar out in pain. And that's when I took my shot, putting two tranquilizers in its head as flames built up around it. We wanted to make sure that it couldn't fly away or escape being burned up, which is what we did to it after building a massive bonfire to make sure it was incinerated, since fire was the only way to kill it. And it was then that the Sightmare Monster was finally dead, but our night of terror wouldn't end before the night sky would glow from the lights of multiple UFOs that hovered above us before disappearing as fast as they showed up. My grandfather then ended the story by telling me that aliens are real, and that night wasn't the first time he seen them, but it was the first time that he witnessed a terrifying monster be unleashed on Earth by the Greys. Before my grandfather died, he told that story the same way and never changed the line, and he always built up tears in his eyes whenever he talked about his partner. And no, if you're wondering, he doesn't know what happened to Mary, and the last he heard, the government took her. But... Was his story true? Well, I intend to believe it was, but my opinions doesn't matter. The real question is, do you believe it?